Hey, and welcome. It's Brandon Sabaka. Welcome to Brand Backstage, where you get a behind the scenes answer to any comment, question, or concern that I receive throughout the week about how to build your brand, um, either online or offline. Um, <clears throat> and uh, I prefer the hybrid model, kind of right in the middle, um, where you're doing some work online, you're doing some off offline, and that. Uh, uh, these days with COVID, a lot of people have at least one foot on uh, in on the online side, <clears throat> and it seems to be more and more are joining in uh, to do so. So if you're experiencing that and uh, online is a little new to you, then feel free to you know drop questions below um, about anything that you need to know, and I will be happy to answer them. If you want, you can just uh, go to the website and leave me messages or you could leave them below or you if you follow me on any social media uh, you can instant message me uh, i will get to those answers at some point in time or get to those questions at some point in time and uh, probably answer you either there or we'll add them to the questions here or both <clears throat> and so uh, i know you guys are interested in hearing about what I have in store today. The question I have, I'm going to dive right in, <clears throat> is the following. I struggle with how to present my content. Ineffective communication doesn't only waste time and money, but our great products and services are passed over. How do I create clear and consistent communication? Uh, this is a great question, and it's it's really um a game breaker when you when you nail down your communication and it's clear it's consistent and then it's different um, and we'll talk about that <clears throat> just a little bit we won't get too deep into that piece but uh, because uh, effective communication starts with being clear first then consistent and as you start to nail that down then you want to start kind of being uh, you know uh, adding the differentiators. <clears throat> uh, and the reason I say that is sometimes uh, we get too caught up on the differentiators first and become a little too cute in how we're trying to communicate when really initially you just need people to understand what you do, um, what problems you solve and how you can help them, what opportunities you provide uh, in a very clear way up front first. <clears throat> and so uh, with clear communication, you can get people's attention. You can get them engaged. Uh, you can keep them engaged and then you can build interest. And then that interest obviously leads to the opportunity for, uh, more work, more sales, more leads, um, and ongoing relationships. <clears throat> so super important. And especially today, um, if you're not going to be able to meet people in person, hopefully uh, you can nail down clear communication so you can communicate in an effective way online, right? Um, I know so many people rely on that in-person communication over the phone or speaking in person. Maybe they're even doing it. Actually, a ton of people are doing it right now via Zoom. If they can't meet in person, they're doing Zoom calls. <clears throat> but if you're missing uh, the boat on all of these other in-personal uh, communication channels that really can generate a lot of business from you and a lot of eyes, a lot of ears, a lot of interest elsewhere, reach people that you can't do on your own. That's really the benefit. Um, then you are missing out. <clears throat> right. And so, um, if you know anything about brand, then you probably heard this many a times, but, uh, nailing down brand is really the foundation of communications and uh, eventually a nice little content strategy that then gets drilled into, you know, your YouTube channel, you know, your social media, your email communications, all of these different channels that really allow you to connect. So uh, just a few reasons why it's so important, right? But what are the problems? Well, <clears throat> uh, right out of the gate, a lot of times, the big problems are this. Uh, we're not really clear on who we're trying to speak to, right? We're not really clear where they hang out. 
we're not really clear. And really, it's just because if we, we're not very clear on that one person, that ideal client, we don't know what their interests are. We don't know where they're at online or we don't know where they are offline. We don't know a lot of the details that we need to know in order to, one, get in front of them first and then two, communicate with them effectively um, and really consistently over time that gets their ear, right? So um, how do you create clear and cons consistent uh, communications? I would tell you this, uh, there's really kind of steps to it. Uh, and, and, and to begin, the first three really have to do with you, your ideal client, and your competitors. Here's what I mean. So number one is <clears throat> really understanding who you are and what you stand for, right? What you stand for, the, the, the brand values, a lot of times people call them, um, the brand ambitions uh, maybe is what you stand for. And um, if you are able to communicate that, then it should come down to a handful of words that then have a deeper meaning that you guys have communicated and, and uh, clearly articulated yourselves as an organization or as a marketing team or as whatever, um, as whatever you are um, as a company. If you are a solopreneur, then it's, it's just you. If you're a bigger company, then you're communicating um, with a whole team. And so it's really understanding what you stand for then, and that's really you. Okay. Then it's the customer. And what I'm talking about is really the customer journey and what I like to call the story arc, right? Which is the story arc is really the big transformation that happens uh, over the span of when they first meet with you to the ultimate outcome that they really want. And then within that, there's these little mini transformations that become, uh, medium sized transformations that all equal in total a major transformation, right? <clears throat> and so understanding that story and being able to communicate the different parts where you can snag people's attention, drop them into the story, and then help them progress from there is really um, super important. And then the third piece is understanding who you are from a differentiation standpoint and how are you different from your current competitors, right? And if you have, if, if you're in an industry where the, the products and the services are very, very similar or pretty much the same, then it has to come from uh, a feeling or an experience that you are able to create that is uniquely different which a lot of times is this underlying psychology uh, behind the brand, right? Of, uh, for example, are you optimistic or are you super practical, right? Although you're selling the same things, a brand that is optimistic compared to the brand that is ex uh, extra practical is going to sound different. And because of that, depending upon the individual, some will resonate towards the optimistic one. Some will resonate towards the more practical one. And so you want to be able to communicate that, right? Also, um, how do you want to be different maybe uh, in your industry, right? In your industry or in your specific field, your niche, whatever you want to call it, there's specific points of parity that you have to hit and communicate on that are going to get people to believe you are an expert in that area, but then you also want points of polarity or differentiation um, about how you are uniquely different and competing with them. So uh, what are some of those things that uh, you may be able to communicate that's missing in your industry? Um, or maybe it's feelings, or maybe it's, like I said, experiences. So those three of what you stand for who your audience is and, and uh, the, the wants, needs, <clears throat> and aspirations, hopes, the obstacles and fears that occur along that story arc 
and that brand's story are very important. And then the last piece of um, who you are in terms of differentiating yourself from your competitors. Um, if you can get clear on those, you now have a nice, solid foundation. <clears throat> now, what does that look like? Well, what that looks like is this. I really typically focus on three areas. I focus on <clears throat> uh, the creative, right? The creative is how you look and feel to an audience, right? Um, which is communicating something, right? Uh, right now you can see me, I'm dressed up pretty casual. That's part of my brand. I'm, I'm laid back, casual. If I dress up nice, it's usually just a, a suit coat, button up, and then probably jeans and, and tennis shoes <clears throat> or jeans. Um, and, uh, or maybe even, you know, a t-shirt underneath a dress coat, you know, something like that is something that I'm uh, communicating, um, with a look and a feel, right? Same thing happens in a logo and, and signs, your website design, etc. <clears throat> Number two is, um, culture, right? So you just said creative and the design and look and feel. <clears throat> and then the culture, the culture is really uh, how we act or how people experience us, right? And um, if you don't have a culture, like right now you're experiencing me, you might be experiencing that I'm very thorough or I'm in depth or <clears throat> um, I don't know. Well, I don't know what you're experiencing, but I'm pretty thorough. I'm pretty organized. I'm pretty off the cuff. It's not, you know, some formal presentation that I'm doing right now. It's just a conversation basically, uh, that I'm here to help. Right. Uh, and so that's kind of a culture is what are people going to experience or how are we going to act and what are they going to experience from us, uh, in order to communicate. Right. So that is communicating something. So the creative is communicating a look and feel the culture is communicating, uh, an experience or how we act. <clears throat> and then your typical, uh, focused communications and how we speak. Right. And so, uh, those are three ways that once you nail down what you stand for, who you are and how you're different, um, and who your audience is and who you're trying to communicate this to over this uh, transformation that they're going to be experienced with you. <clears throat> you are going to do that in these three ways, the culture, the creative and the communications, right? So, um, that's ideally how you start to create number one, clear communications and then consistent, right? Really the clear piece is going to come from the first three of really understanding your values and what those mean to you. What I mean by what those mean to you is this, <clears throat> is if one person says they uh, are a happy person, they can explain that and that's what it means for them. However, this person over here may hear that and say, that's not what happy means, right? So you have to create a clear definition of what happy or whatever the value is for you really truly means to you and your organization and be able to articulate that. Um, once you have that, you now have your values <clears throat> and you're very clear on them. You're very clear on how to articulate them, how they mean, what they mean to you. <clears throat> then you get very clear on who you are and how you're different, uh, from your competition. Right. And you get very clear and be able to articulate that. Then, like I said, along the, st uh, the story is get very clear on number one, the story and what that massive transformation is, the big transformation from A to B. <clears throat> and then in between, you know, the, the moderate transformations that they're going to experience and the mini transformations that they're going to experience, because those are all the things that you can talk about that will potentially get your people's attention and then draw them into the story, which is going to, over time, <clears throat> show them this major transformation or get them to experience the major transformation. When you get clear or when you get all those, you're going to get clarity, right? The second piece is the consistency. The consistency of communications has to happen 
not just in what we speak, but in how we look and feel, right? The creative and what people experience through our actions. All of those three are going to create a consistency in the communication about the clarity that you have of your business and what you're going to do for the customer. So I hope that makes sense. Um, if it doesn't, feel free to drop questions below. Uh, but ultimately, where communication fits and uh, the grand scheme of your growth is really at the beginning. You know, nailing down effective communication <clears throat> uh, typically means that you do those things that we talked about, but then there's a piece that you have to actually put it out there right? We can spend all day long and, and, and actually all year long and many more years as, as many people have trying to get very clear and what our, uh, get very almost perfectionist about what our communication is. Um, however, where you're going to really gain the most insight is when you actually put it out there and start to engage with the customer in different ways, whether it's through video uh, whether it's through uh, doing a podcast, whether it's interviewing, whether it's communicating on Zoom, <clears throat> whether it's uh, through your blog or your website, whether it's talking to them on the phone, whether it's you doing a talk or presentation, whatever it is, that is where you're going to get the best insight about how to really uh, communicate to a customer, right? What are uh, you're going to find out what really stands out to customers about your products, about your services, about you, about your business. And that's where you're going to be able to uh, tweak and quote unquote rebrand kind of along the way <clears throat> and uh, learn and get very, very clear about what all of those things should be even more. Um, and here's what starts to happen is if you are communicating th those things well, <clears throat> but people are talking about something different, you may have a different audience and you may not be capturing the right audience. Um, or maybe you've captured a new audience in a different way. And so what you'll start to see over time is you also have different audience segmentations that you'll, that you'll start to experience over time based off of how you communicate. So we're going down a whole nother road, right? But first to get clear and consistent communication, you need to do the first three steps. <clears throat> what we stand for um, in our values, who we are and how we're different uh, from our competitors, um, who our audience is, and what is the transformation that we are trying to share in our story, right? That's what they want to experience. Um, and then once you have that, the consistency comes through the creative, through the culture, and through the communications and those specific behaviors of doing those on a consistent basis as well. So uh, if you can do that, you will have effective communications um, most of the time, and uh, you will have effective communication. Uh, the key then is identifying if you have an actual profitable business product or service, because if you're communicating it clearly, and you're not making any money, you're communicating consist consistently, and you're not making any money, then you may just need to potentially communicate it different. And if that still doesn't work, then you may not have a product that's really uh, hitting the spot for people. Uh, so <clears throat> I hope that helps. If you have any questions, like I said, leave them below. Uh, any questions, comments, concerns, if you liked it, give us a thumbs up, subscribe. And um, until next time, this is Brand Backstage. I'm Brandon Sabaka. Talk to you soon. I'm out.